bringing old ships to life. Hello everybody, it's Jamie from Old Shipping Lines and welcome back to a new video. Now, in the video of today, we'll be talking about the famous German vessel, the SS Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse. Now, some of you may be familiar with the ship, while others may not. It's a story of grandeur that ended in tragedy. Now, this fine liner would be owned by North Deutsche Lloyd and would be built by the shipbuilders Vulkan Stettin. The gross tonnage of this vessel would be 14.349 gross registered tons, with her length being 655 feet and with a beam of 66.0 feet. Now the power of this mighty vessel would come from three quadruple expansion engines and a single low pressure turbine which were powered by steam, produced by 14 boilers. Now the ship had two screw propellers, giving her the speed of 22 and a half knots. Now the ship could accommodate up to 174 first class passengers, 202 second class passengers and 1.330 third class passengers. And she had a crew of 484 people. Now the launch of the SS Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse took place on 4 May 1897, attended by the imperial family. The emperor himself, Kaiser Wilhelm II, performed the christening ceremony, in honor of his grandfather, Emperor William I, known as the Great. The liner was completed and decorated at Bremerhaven, with her maiden voyage planned for September. Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was the first vessel to boast four funnels. The SS Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse set out on her maiden voyage on 19 September 1897, traveling from Bremerhaven to Southampton and then to New York, with a capacity of 800 third class passengers. The NDL had ensured that they would profit greatly from immigrants from Europe to the United States. Making her maiden voyage, the superliner was the only one to cross the Atlantic with such velocity and media attention. In March 1898, she won the Blue Ribbon, a award given for the fastest Atlantic crossing, east and westbound. She attained a average speed of 22.3 knots, establishing 
German superiority and replacing the Cunard vessel, the RMS Lucania, as the record holder. This turn of events was closely watched by the maritime world of the era, who were eager to see how the British would retaliate. Now in 1900, the NDL's prized blue ribbon was lost to the German superliner, the SS Deutschland, of the Hamburg America Line. Now, this shift in power was welcomed by the NDL, who were relieved to retain the title of the fastest liner. The NDL decided to have Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse go through a refit. Now, this refit included the installation of wireless. The then new technology, which allowed Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse to transmit telegraphic messages to a port. Now, in 1901, the NDL raised the bar by introducing the four funnel liner Kronprins Wilhelm, named after Crown Prince William the heir to the German throne. They followed this up by building two more superliners, the Kaiser Wilhelm II and Kronprinzessin Cecile in 1903 and 1907. Tragically, in June 1900, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was struck by a fire at her quay in Hoboken, New Jersey, resulting in the loss of 100 lives who were attempting to tow the ship to safety in the Hudson River. Now, six years later, a collision with the RMS Orinoco in Cherbourg Harbour on 21 November 1906 caused further tragedy, resulting in five passengers on board the Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse and three crewmen on board the Orinoco losing their lives. While the Orinoco's clipper bow left an 8 meter tear in the starboard side of the ship's hull. A court of inquiry found that the Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was wholly responsible for the collision. Now, adding to the sorrow, New York City Mayor William J. Gaynor was shot on board the ship on 9 August 1910, while embarking on a European vacation. A technological evolution of steamships soon made NDL's express steamers outdated. Cunard's RMS Lusitania and RMS Mauritania outmatched their German rivals in all fields. And when the future White Star's RMS Olympic entered service in 1911, luxury on the high seas was taken one step further. As a consequence, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was rebuilt in 1913 to accommodate only third-class passengers. Her former greatness was sadly diminished, despite her claim to fame as the first 
of the four stackers. From 26 January 1907, she was employed to transport passengers between the Mediterranean Sea and New York, thus concluding the public career of the pioneering four flyers. Now, during World War I, on 4 August 1914, Great Britain declared war on Germany due to the invasion of Belgium and Luxembourg. Thus, the SS Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was requisitioned and transformed into a grey and black armed cruiser. Under the command of Captain Rayman, the ship operated according to the rules of both war and the rules of mercy. Now Rayman soon sank three ships, but only after taking their occupants on board. Further south in the Atlantic, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse encountered two passenger liners, the Galician and the Arlanza. Now Rayman's first intention was to sink both vessels, but discovering that they had many women and children on board, he let them go. In this early stage of the war, it was thought that it could be fought in a chivalrous fashion. However, soon it was to become a total war, and ships would no longer be warned before being fired upon. As the Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse headed toward the west coast of Africa, her coal bunkers were nearly empty and in need of refilling. She stopped at Rio de Oro, where German and Austrian ships began to refuel her. The task of coaling was still going on on 26 August, when the British cruiser HMS High Flyer appeared. Raymond quickly prepared his ship and crew for battle. The ship steamed out to face the enemy after disembarking her prisoners of war. A fierce battle ensued with Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse eventually running out of ammunition. Now, according to the Germans, Raymond ordered the ship to be scuttled, using dynamite in order to prevent her from being captured. Upon detonation, the massive explosion caused the ship to capsize. This version of events was disputed by the British, who asserted that Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse had already been badly damaged and sinking when Raymond ordered to abandon her. They insisted that it was gunfire from the HMS High Flyer that ultimately sank the German ship. Captain Raymond managed to swim to shore and eventually returned to Germany. Most of the crew were taken prisoner and detained in the Armhurst internment camp in Nova Scotia for the duration of the war. 
And that is the end to a video, my friends. Thank you all so very much for watching once again. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed and liked it. Uh, I certainly loved making this one. It's a slightly larger one than normal. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the story of the SS Kaiser Wilhelm the Grosse. Quite a tragic one. Uh, once being such a amazing ocean liner to meet the tragic fate uh, that she did. Um, it's quite sad. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I quickly want to take a moment to thank all of you, my subscribers. Uh, thank you all so very much. I wouldn't be here without you guys. Uh, it blows me away each and every time how so many of you guys actually watch and enjoy my content. So thank you all so very much. Um, if you have any friends who like ocean liners or ships, please show them my channel. <laughs> that would help out very much. Um, if, you have, uh, if you have any comments or thoughts, uh, please leave them in the description down below. Uh, I absolutely love reading them. So again, if you have any comments or thoughts, please leave them in the description down below. I read and reply to each and every one of them. And please, as well, let me know what ships uh, you would like me to cover in the next video. So, with that out of the way, guys, I wish you all a good night or day, wherever you are. And we will see each other on the next video. Goodbye, my friends. Follow old shipping lines on social media. Thanks for watching.